Hi everyone! Today I'm sharing another tutorial for you uh, for this photo booklet. Um, this is my, I'm going to call it the Intermediate 2 album. It is a bit more advanced than my Intermediate, like my first Intermediate album, so I would definitely recommend if you haven't watched the Beginners album tutorial and the Intermediate album tutorial, I would recommend watching those and maybe trying one of those before you um, try this one, just because um, this one does have some concepts that I had mentioned in previous videos, so um, I would recommend watching those ones first before attempting this one. Uh, second thing I wanted to mention is in this video, I do make a couple of mistakes. I left them in just so that you guys could see, you know, I'm human too and, and we all make mistakes. Uh, when we're cutting and measuring things, but I would recommend watching the video from beginning to end f one time first before you attempt the album, um, just so that you can take note of where I made the mistakes and um, make sure that you don't do the same things that I do. Third thing I wanted to say about this album is that I used uh, two paper collections. Um, the first one is the Coco Daisy Flannel and Frost collection, which was released in October. And the second one is Coco Daisy's Acorn Lane collection, which was released this month. Um, they both worked really well with the craft cardstock that I had, and especially with the photos of this guinea pig, um, who is my sister's guinea pig. Um, so I decided to use both those collections. And you see that they do, they do really work very well together in this album. I also use chipboard pieces from those two collections as well as rub-ons and some stickers and things like that, which I will point out um, at the end of this video. So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create um, this envelope here. So this can hold some photo mats in here, um, some memorabilia if it's flat, Next we have this um, pocket assembly that opens up and there is another pocket up here as well. And in these pockets I just have some mini photo mats as well as some 4x6 photo mats. And I do have a large photo mat in the back as well. Next, I have this photo mat assembly that holds four photo mats. And a kind of an accordion style photo mat assembly. I just love how the colors in these two collections went with my photos. I'll be showing you how to make this flip up waterfall. as well as this pop-up page. So I have two photos here, two photos there, and it closes flat. Um, another photo mat here. Here I have an accordion style photo mat, so it is an accordion fold, but you can flip it open and look at it like so. And this way. So 
So if you'd like to see how to create this album, um, you can keep watching. If you'd like to um, find out more information about Coco Daisy, um, you can message me. Or if you'd like to subscribe, you can mention my YouTube channel, Shoe Puff Creations, um, for $10 off if you subscribe. Um, so if you subscribe, you'll get $10 off your next purchase. Um, and if you have any questions, as always, you can feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Alright, so for this tutorial, I'm going to be using craft cardstock instead of the white cardstock that I've normally been using. Um, I've still labeled the um, pieces with the measurements, but I don't know if it's a bit harder to read. Um, let me know down in the comments below. I'll still be reading out the uh, measurements, so you don't have to worry if, if they're a bit hard to read. So to get started, we'll start with our ba base pages. For this album, because there's going to be a bit more bulk, I have um, accommodated for that um, with this extra large gusset here. So I have here two pieces that are eight and a half inches by seven and a quarter inches. And we're scoring at the seven and a quarter inch side at half an inch and one inch. So that leaves a half an inch gusset, whereas in the past albums there's only been a quarter of an inch gusset. So we're going to take those and fold at those score lines. I've also applied tape to this edge that's closest to um, this edge here. And then we'll have another base piece that's eight and a half inches by six and a quarter inches. So our finished album will still be um, eight and a half inches by six and a quarter inches um, in uh, like the size, but the thickness will be a bit um, larger. So we're going to attach this page to here and this page to the back to make um, the kind of three page album like we had last time, just um, this one will be a bit thicker. So we'll line it up at the edges. I have my little tool here to remove the score tape. Oops. So we just want to make sure this is lined up. Um, as I mentioned before, I like to rotate it so that it's facing me. Um, it is just a bit easier for me to see. So like so. And then this one we will attach to here. to the back of that page, make sure it's lined up. There we go. And so you can see that, whoopsies, this album will be just a bit wider um, in terms of thickness than the other album was. All right, so we'll get started on our first page. So for the first page, I'm going to have um, a pocket up here, as well as two slanted pockets going that way. And the slanted pockets are going to be able to open and close. So the first thing that we need to do um, is build the pocket in the back. So I've cut a page um, at seven and a quarter inches by eight inches, and I'm, I've scored on the seven and a quarter inch side at half an inch and six and three quarters, as well as on the eight inch side, I've scored at half an inch there. I've also applied the score tape to these three edges, and we're just going to cut off our corners. So if you remember, um, just where these two lines intersect, we're going to make a diagonal cut right along there so that when we're folding the pocket down, it's going to have less bulk. Mm -hmm. 
Another thing that I'm going to do is I'd like to create a bit of a notch here um, for my pocket. So the way that I like to do that is I have this um, envelope punch board. This is from We Are Memory Keepers. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line this up at the two inch mark and punch. I'm going to flip it over, line it up again at the two inch mark and punch. And this is just going to create kind of like a rounded notch here. I'm just going to slide this in and just cut off this area right there. Make sure to stop here and stop there. There we go. Then now I'm going to fold my pocket down. If you have any pieces that are overhanging here, you can always cut them off. Make sure these pieces here don't overlap. And we're going to stick it down right here. So I like to just start at one edge and get that tape down first before I do the other edges. Typically I like to do the bottom edge first. Make sure that's straight. And so there we have a nice pocket. For the slanted pockets, I've created two pages here. Um, this is seven and a quarter inches by 11 inches. So we're scoring on the seven and a quarter side um, at half an inch, five eighths of an inch. So that's just a tiny bit more than at the half of inch. And then we're going to score at six and three quarters of an inch. Um, and apply score tape. So the way that I have, I don't know if you can see, so that's where my half inch mark is, and that's where my 5 eighths of an inch mark is. And I've applied score tape to the outer edges, as well as on one side of this paper. Um, so I've, I've scored on the 11 inch side at five and a half, which is um, just folding it in half. So on one, of, one half of this paper, I've applied score tape to one edge here, as well as I've used an eighth of an inch score tape um, in between the half inch mark and the five eighths of an inch mark. On the other side, I've only applied score tape onto the outer edge and the outer edge here. So I've left that gap there without score tape. So next what we're going to do is we're going to cut along here to the intersection mark. So just that half an inch there, we're going to cut like so. And then on this edge, we're going to cut all the way to that five eighths of an inch mark. So right along the score line here, and we're just going to stop right there. On the side that you don't have score tape, we're going to cut that off. So I'll get out my trimmer here. And so remember that we're just going to stop at this halfway mark here. So 
so that we're only removing that piece that doesn't have score tape on it. So what we're going to do is fold this back on itself. We're going to fold this back here, fold this like so, and then just fold on that eighth of an inch gusset line like so. On this piece that has the um, 3 eighths of an inch score tape as well as the 8 inch score tape, we're going to fold that all the way back. So what we're going to end up with is this pocket is going to be adhered flat like that. And then this one here, this flap, we're going to use to attach to our album like so. So before we do that, I like to just taper this corner here and taper this corner here. Just to make sure that when you're closing the pocket um, and this corner here, and this corner here. It just reduces the risk of having a bit of overhang um, when you're folding your pieces down. All right, so we'll fold the pockets shut. Remember to keep this flap out. Don't fold it into the pocket because that's going to be what we're attaching to our base page. So I'm just going to line this up. Make sure this side is lined up. And then this side should just fall into here like so. So you have a pocket with a flap that we're going to use to attach it to the base page. Now before we attach it to the base page, I'd like to um, make a slant. So I'm just going to measure about two inches from the bottom. And I'm going to make a mark there. I will need a pencil. So I'm just making a mark at the two inches here. So, and I'm going to cut all the way from this corner here to the two inch mark. So you just line it up in your paper trimmer. You might have to um, put a bit of pressure into that so that the pocket cuts evenly. There we go. So we're going to peel the score tape off. And apply it to the bottom of this page. Just on the edge. Like so. So we're going to do another page exactly like that. So the measurements are exactly the same, but this is the opposite of the other page. So um, you'll see that I have the um, half an inch mark on this side and the five eighths of an inch mark scored at the side as well. And then this side, I only have the half inch mark scored. So again, we're just going to cut on this side up to the 5 8 inch mark. 
on this side up to the half an inch mark. We're going to remove this piece that doesn't have score tape on it. Remember to stop cutting over here. Like so. Now we're going to fold our flaps down. Remember that this one with um, both sides sizes of score tape, you want to fold all the way. This one, the piece that only has one piece of score tape, you want to fold on both of the score marks here. Because that one is what's going to make your um, flap. Like so. So this piece is the one that we're going to keep on the outside. We're going to taper the edges, um, just the corner pieces, on all four sides. So, here, And then we're going to fold this pocket down. So I think on this one here, I've actually added the score tape onto the wrong side. Yeah, I've added the score tape onto the wrong side of this flap. So the bad thing about score tape is that it does stick quite well, so I'm going to have to be very careful not to rip my paper. If it rips a tiny bit, I'm okay with that. There we go. because we want to make sure that the tape is on the back so that it attaches right there. I'm also going to, you see that I have um, this back piece is a tiny bit longer than this front piece. I'm just going to trim it so that it's even. And we're going to make that same slant, so going from this corner to two inches from the bottom. So I'm going to mark with pencil two inches from the bottom. And we're going to cut right along here. So now we have a pocket right there. Um, and I'm just going to add some score tape onto this side now. Mm -hmm. 
remove the tape backing. There we go. So we'll have a pocket here, pocket here, and a pocket back here. I am going to add a magnet right there so that that remains closed. There we go. So that's the first page done. Um, now we're going to move on to um, this. I've called it page one and a half. Um, so we're going to create a couple of photo flaps um, that are attached onto this page. Um, and yeah, so I've cut two pieces here at four and seven of an eighth inch. Um, Oh, sorry, these are these are different sizes. So one piece is four and seven eighths of an inch by six and a quarter. We're scoring on the four and seven eighths inch at half an inch and five eighths of an inch. So that will just create a bit of a gusset in this page um, so that it's a bit easier to fold just because we are going to have four photo flaps in this uh, page assembly. So I'm going to fold on both of those score lines. Um, and this half an inch piece is what we're going to be attaching um, our base to our base page, like so. And make sure that you're going to be lining it up on the base page and not going into the gusset. So I'm going to um, this won't be a this this won't be centered, but um, I'm just going to eyeball it kind of here, like so. And then this page is a bit smaller. This is four and three quarters of an inch by six and a quarter of an inch. We're scoring on the short side the, um, at the half an inch mark. So that page um, I would like to just put over here so that it folds out like that. So line it up on the edge of that photo mat, like so. Next we have two pieces. Um, these are both four and a quarter inches by six and three quarters of an inch. We're going to score on the six and three quarters of an inch side at the half inch mark and put score tape there as usual. So these two are actually going to go um, in here. So we're going to have one here and one here so that we can open this and these will flip up. So I'm going to have to turn my book upside down so that this edge is just closer to me um, just so I can see a bit better. So 
we're going to line this up on this edge and this edge here. Should match up. Like so. And then this is going to attach onto that other photo mat. Making sure to line up the edges and don't go over your gusset line. There we go. So this I might also hold shut with a magnet. I haven't decided yet, so I'm not going to put a magnet there yet, but I think it might it might just stay closed by itself, or I might do a paper clip here as well, could be another closure option. So now we're going to move on to the next page. So on this page here, um, I'm going to attach a couple of photo mats and they're going to be kind of um, cascading in size. So they're going to be layered like so, and it's going to kind of accordion fold up. Um, before we do that though, I'd like to have a pocket on the bottom of this page. I forgot to apply the score tape here, but that's all right. Um, so this is cut at seven and a quarter inch by three and three quarters of an inch. We're going to score on the seven and a quarter inch side at half an inch and six and three quarters of an inch. And on the three and three quarters of an inch side, we're going to score at half an inch. And we're going to apply score tape on the three edges. So I'll quickly do that here. And you'll notice that I never apply score tape into these corners. That's just because when we're um, tapering our corners, um, that corner is going to be chopped off anyways. So um, just don't want to waste the score tape. Um, so as usual, we're going to cut along the diagonally along where the lines intersect. and fold all of these pieces back to create a pocket. So you can see um, that is overlapping that piece a bit here, so I'm just going to cut a bit more off of this edge here, or this corner rather. So that looks a bit better. And we're going to attach it right down here. So start at the bottom edge first. Might have shifted actually. Let's see. Right there. And right there. So we have a pocket. Next, I have three photo mats here. One is at five and a quarter inch by seven and three quarters of an inch. We're scoring at the seven and three quarters of an inch side at half an inch here and applying score tape. And we're going to apply that at the top here. So turn my book upside down.
I'd like to um, make sure that this is centered. So I have my centering ruler here. There we go, that's pretty good. Next we have a page that is four and a quarter inches by six and three quarters of an inch. Um, scored at half an inch on the six and three quarter of an inch side. I've put score tape on the back of this because that will just hook into here like so. And this I also want to be centered. So let's see how I can do that. All right. I might have to flip this page over to put it on this side. So this folds over like that and this piece will just go here this piece is three and a quarter inches by four and three quarters of an inch scored at uh, half an inch on the four and three quarters of an inch side so right here and again score tape on the back we're just going to apply it in here so again I want to make sure that is centered Shift it a tiny bit this way. Yeah, that's good enough. I might later on add a magnet to the back of here to attach it to this pocket um, but I might not need it depending on how heavy this page is it might just hold it shut by itself all right so we'll move on to page three next so this page is going to have um, one of those um, waterfalls where it like flips when you pull it so we're going to start um, the page with uh, there's a couple of elements here um, that I've cut out the first one we need to be um, uh, yeah the first one we need to cut out is this one here uh, four and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter inches and we're going to score at a couple of score marks so this is one inch and then it's going to be half an inch every um, every half an inch until four inches. So one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, and four. And we're going to apply score tape onto each of these half an inch um, spaces here, as well as putting score tape on this one inch piece here. The next piece we have is um, a four and a half inch, uh, sorry, four and a quarter inch by eight and a quarter inch. So this is actually going to be the same size as that other piece, um, except this one is not going to have any score marks on it. 
um, and we're going to cut a band here that is five and a half inches by one and a half inches. We're going to score it half an inch, five eighths of an inch, four and seven eighths of an inch, and five inches on the five and a half inch side. So you'll see on each side we have half an inch here, and then we have an eighth of an inch gusset, half an inch here, an eighth of an inch gusset. We're going to apply score tape onto these two sides here, as well as to the back, but make sure you don't cross over that gusset score line. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our two long pieces and we're going to attach them together. So this piece is going to attach to the back of here to make a really long piece that's going to be overlapped by this um, one inch part here. So just going to remove the score tape on here. And make sure that when you're taping this down, that it doesn't cross over that score mark right there. Do you want to make sure that it's on as straight as possible? So actually, I'm going to even just fold this over. So I'm holding these two sides down, making sure they're all straight. And I'm going to fold this over back onto itself because I want to make sure that this is absolutely straight, like so. So the way that this is going to work is we're going to put a band here and this is going to be able to slide when you pull this um, to reveal some photos there. And it will be really cool. Um, what I want to do is I want to taper the edges, um, the corners here, um, and eventually I'll stamp like a pull symbol here um, uh, or something like that uh, so that the um, recipient of this album knows that they have to pull this um, in order for this album to work. So I have this uh, We Are Memory Keepers. This is um, a corner chomper. And this is the one that has an angle and a photo corner. So I'm just going to use the angle corner here. Put your piece in and chomp. Put your piece in and chomp. Like so. So the next thing that, that we have to do is attach this onto our page here. Um, so the, the way that we are going to do that is we're going to attach this band across here and it's going to wrap around all of these pieces. So I'm going to fold out all of these score marks we created. This one here and this one here. So you'll see that that creates a bit of a gusset there. And we're going to adhere this on the bottom of this piece right here. So I'm going to turn it over to do so that I can make sure that it doesn't cross those um, gusset marks. So just make sure that yeah, this is the right way. lined up. There we go. There we go. So this piece is going to go right in the center here. I'm actually going to take this piece out for now um, and you'll see why in a bit. Well actually I need that to center the piece. Let's see. My head is probably superly in the way right now, but I just need this to be centered. So, down. so 
So it's going to be right there. So the way that I'm going to do this is carefully lift this up, put my finger under there um, to hold it in place, lift this score tape up, and we're going to attach this piece down here, like so. On the other side, we want to make sure that this piece is still straight, lift this up. and attach this piece down. So now it's um, adhered just by those two flaps. Um, and I'm actually going to pull this out um, so that we can attach our pattern piece of paper to the back. Now the reason why I want to do that is if you look here, um, it's probably very hard to see, but where your um, band is attaching to the album. Sometimes when you're sliding your piece um, back and forth, uh, the pieces will get caught on the edges of um, that adhe adhesion place. So if you slide a piece of pattern paper down through there, then that won't get caught on anything. So I've cut this piece of paper down. Um, I've already measured it. And I'm just going to make sure that it is evenly spaced out um, in here. This piece of pattern paper you won't actually see very much just because your um, sliding piece is going to be in here, but um, I still like to have it centered just, just in case and just have it lined up. And I've already added score tape to the back of this, which might make this a bit difficult to apply because this is inside the band. So um, if you don't want to do this, feel free to, you can skip this step if you, if you don't feel like doing this, but I think it just um, makes for a bit of a smoother slide. Um, so that's why I did it. But it might just be a bit difficult to center. I don't want to accidentally tear my page up. So we're going to move it very carefully. Oopsies. Yep, that that was okay. So you see we have to just line it up so that it's not showing. There we go. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. <laughs> And I'm going to reach my tweezers in the back and just carefully remove the other pieces of score tape. This one might be a bit difficult to remove. I do still have a bit of score tape um, behind there, but I'm just getting out as much as I can and not worrying about the rest because ultimately it's going to be behind there. So, oh, that piece came out. Okay. There we go. And the top piece here just have to be removed like so. There we go. That was relatively painless. <laughs> All right. So we're going to slide this piece back behind here. And so now you can see that when you pull this, it doesn't snag. So now we just have to add all of our photo flaps to all of these flaps here. I'm like sweating guys. This is the first time I've done one of these pages in an album. so. Um, yeah, so I have six pieces here cut um, at four and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches. Um, so they're just going to be able to fit uh, four by four photos on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach um, pieces along here, making sure that they're all nice and lined up. So 
So again, you don't want to, um, you want to make sure your pieces aren't um, crossing over, like they're um, stopping at the top of that score line, because otherwise when you go to flip your pages, um, it won't flip very well. Okay, there's one piece. Got to make sure it's straight. There we go. Next piece. Um, I've tried it. Um, I made like a little prototype and um, I don't think you can fit any more pieces. Like I don't think this could um, have any more flaps because I think at some point in time it's going to, like you're going to have too much bulk and um, it won't go through that uh, band that we created. I did create a gusset on that band um, just because I do anticipate that there's going to be a bit of bulk there. Um, but I wouldn't recommend adding any more than the six flaps that we have. Okay. So we have all of our flaps, we have our pull tag, and that looks, that looks pretty good. I'm really pleased with that right now. Um, and so of course you can put photos on all of these flaps. Um, I think I might even put another photo here um, as well. And I don't worry about this belly band. So the reason why I wanted the band on top of this assembly instead of on the bottom was because I was worried that if it was on the bottom, it would start catching on things too. Because you can see that the rest of this, um, these photo flaps are going in behind here. So, um, it's actually really cool to watch it work. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. So um, this next page here, I'm going to create um, a bit of a pop-up element. Um, and so what I've done is I've created uh, two pieces here at five and three quarters of an inch by five and a half inch. And I'm scoring at half an inch on the five and three quarters of an inch side. So you can see that it's kind of like wider than it is tall. And we're just scoring there and applying score tape to both of them. Uh, we'll do that piece later. I've also uh, cut a piece here um, at six and a half inches by four and a half inches, and I've scored at three and a quarter inch on the six and a half inch side, so that's just folding it in half. And I've also um, uh, scored at half an inch on the four and a half inch side. So that just creates a flap like this. I've also cut it um, just up to um, on this half mark. Uh, halfway mark um, uh, um, up to the half an inch score line. So what my plan for this is, we're going to taper the corners. I always find it easier to taper where the score tape is not. I find it like easier to see where the score lines are. We're going to taper these two corners right there. So that you have a triangle piece there. And what we're going to do is we're going to create like a pop-up element so that when the flap opens, it kind of pops up like that. So we're going to attach our base pieces first onto our base page. Um, and for this element, it is a bit more important to uh, burnish down your um, edges because you do want it to be like um, you do want it to be like a tight uh, closing. So 
which side am I going to attach this on? I think I would like it to open this way. Yeah, so I'll attach that there and then attach this there. Okay, all right. So we're going to take this piece and we're going to attach it to the base page. Uh, remember not to go into your gusset again. Um, so I'm going to put it uh, towards the bottom, I think. Now my head might be in the way again. There we go. And then we're going to attach this into uh, this part here, like so. So I'm actually just going to taper the corners here, just to make sure there's no overhang. And we're going to attach it right into there, like so. So what we're going to do is, um, hmm. So we want the tape edge to be, let's see. Want it to be right there so that when it opens that lifts it up like so so what i'm going to do is we're going to press this corner part into this corner here and then you can see that i cut my um two pieces here so that i can fit this diagonally in here without it coming off the page so you just want to make sure that um, your page does uh, your your piece here does fit in there, and then when it's closed, it's right up against um, the the corner there. So we'll do one side at a time. So this side first. Make sure it's in the corner there. Then remove this piece. Make sure that's pressed down. And so you'll see that when you open this page, it's going to pop up like so. And you have um, room for a couple of photos right there. All right. Um, so after we completed that, um, we're going to add a small pocket onto the back of this page assembly here. Um, so I've cut a piece at six and a quarter inches by three inches. And then on the longer side, we're scoring at half an inch as well as five and three quarters of an inch. And then on the three inch side, we're scoring at the half inch mark. So again, score tape to all three edges. We're going to cut off our corners. I have a feeling I didn't cut that enough. So what I'm going to do with this page to keep it shut is I'm going to probably attach like just a piece of paper here, like it might be a pattern piece of paper just to, and with the magnet to hold this in place, or I might just attach magnets there. Um, I haven't really made up my mind yet. We might just put that there so it's not opening on me. Uh, actually, I did pretty well. Yeah, we can live with that. All 
right? And this is just going to go on the bottom of this piece right here. So. Just want to make sure that this is lined up. So come on. There we go. All right. So this is just like a small pocket. It will probably fit like a couple of three by fours. Um, I just wanted to have um, something that will um, make that back of the page a bit more appealing. Um, and last but not least, we're going to do a kind of like an accordion folded um, page assembly on page four. So I've cut two, three, four, five, six pieces at six and five eighths of an inch by six and a quarter inch. Um, and I've scored at half an inch on the six and five eighths of an inch side and applied score tape to that edge. So we're going to fold all of these down. Um, this I would like to burnish down just because um, since there are so many photo mats, um, once they start layering, if they're not burnished down, they will really not lie flat. So. Alright, so we're going to start um, by centering our piece. <laughs> uh, okay, so it's going to be approximately like there. Um, and you'll notice that I did cut it uh, slightly shorter than the base page. So the base page is um, six and a quarter inches and this finished photo mat, like without the flap, is going to measure um, six and an eighth of an inch. And that's just because like um, if I put it too long with all of this bulk here, um, it's not going to, uh, the, the album's not going to be able to close very well. So. Um, this is going to be, there we go. So I'm going to remove the score tape. Bring that up. And all of these are just going to follow in an accordion fashion. So. This one will just go on top of this flap here. This is going to sit on top of here. Um, so I'm curious to know uh, what your guys' favorite part of this album is. If you can leave a comment down below, I'd be interested to see that because I feel like this album definitely has a lot of interaction and different moving pieces and this is going to look great once I put pattern paper on it. And last piece will go right there. So 
So the thing I like about this size of photo mats as well is because they're about like um they're a bit short on this one side um but they can fit either a six um inch six by four inch photo this way or six by four inch photo this way um so you can have a lot of flexibility in terms of how you're telling your story and this can hold um, a lot of photos because there's the two sides. Um, this will definitely need some sort of magnet or closure. I might um, string some ribbon around and just tie it here, um, potentially is what I can do. Um, and you can see that that pretty much filled our album quite well, like just with that. Um, and I still have to add pattern papers, so this is going to be, like I'm glad I put the extra half um, half inch gussets there. Um, another thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a pocket onto the front of the cover. And that's the last thing, I promise. So, um, I wanted to apply the pattern paper um, before we put the pocket on. Um, and it's going to be kind of like a deconstructed pocket, as in like the flaps will all just open um, and you can throw extra photos in there. Um, just because um, my sister requested that I try to fit 65 photos in here and I don't know if this can fit 65 photos. I think it'll be a bit of a stretch, but um, the outside pocket just lets her add more photos if she needs to. So I've cut down a piece of pattern paper. This is from, um, oh, I forgot to mention, the other piece of paper that I used was from the Coco Daisy um, October um, flannel and frost line. And this one here is from the November Acorn Lane line. Um, and the reason why I'm using these two collections is that they really do go quite well together. Um, and it goes well with the craft colored cardstock as well. So I just want to make sure that's centered. I've applied score tape to the back already. So we'll just remove the lining on that. This is sticking, come on, there we go. gonna make sure that that is the front of yes that's the front of the album <laughs> all right make sure this is centered good And so on this piece, I was debating about, um, so I'm going to be cutting out a window from this piece. And I was debating about putting um, this piece of vellum underneath it, um, like cutting it down, but I haven't decided if I'm going to do that or if I'm going to do like an acetate and a photo. Um, but pretty much this piece is cut at four and three quarters of an inch by seven and a quarter of an inch, scored at the half inch side, uh, sorry, scored at the seven and a quarter inch side um, at half an inch, and score tape there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, draw a frame around here that's about half an inch wide on all sides. So the good thing about this Tim Holtz ruler is that the measurements, so um, like half an inch is here, one inch is there, and then this is one and a half inches. So you can just like put your piece of paper right there and that's half an inch all the way along. I might just make the frame a bit bigger. You know what? Let's make the frame uh, let's make it five eighths of an inch. So right there. Um, if you don't have a ruler like this you can still um, do this. You just have to make um, like measure the marks and then just draw lines to connect them. But I just find it's a lot easier with this ruler. Um, I'm going to fold back on the 
score line just so that um, that amount is not counted in the five eighths of an inch. Um, so to cut this, you can do it either um, uh, on a cutting mat and use a knife to cut that out uh, with your ruler. Um, I like to just use my cutting tool. And just make sure that you're stopping at those marks. My head might get in the way. So I pretty much place my um, this line on the um, cutting blade on that line that I made and I'm going to drag it all the way down to the other line like so so that it doesn't cut all the way. Same thing on this side. And if you cut slow enough, you can feel as well like where the blade is um, cutting into like right there. I can feel that this piece is detached already. So there we go. And we have a nice window frame for either a photo or I might put the acetate in there. Um, who knows? I haven't decided yet. So another thing that I want to do is, I might want to, okay, I should probably remove the pencil marks. Just give me a second while I do that. There we go. So this piece is going to go, I haven't decided, you know, I might, I like that um, kind of slanted look. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. First, I'm going to um, cut off these corners. I am going to open my book so that this lies flat and I'm working on a flat-ish surface. There, that's a bit better. Okay. Um, here I have two pieces at two and a half inches by six and three quarters of an inch. Um, I'm scoring at the two and a half inch side on the half inch line. And I have two pieces like that. And I've applied score tape as well to both pieces. So we're just going to taper the corner. Um, and to make it look like kind of a faux envelope, I'm actually going to um, create kind of like a tapered in edge as well. So what I'm going to do is just do about mm, half an inch on either side, we're going to make a mark there, 
and a mark there. And we're going to cut from this corner to that mark there. So again, you can take out your um, ruler and your um, cutting mat if you have a self-healing cutting mat or something like that. I just find it easier because I have the cutting tool here, paper trimmer, that I can just do that and that looks good. I just have to see where I made my mark. So, and we're going to do that to this piece as well. So I'm going to mark at half an inch, half an inch. And this step is optional if you don't like the look of the tapered flaps. But you'll be able to see what it looks like on my album first. All right, so we're going to fold that over. So this piece is going to go inside here, like so. Um, I'm just going to make sure that it's lined up with this edge. That's why I put this larger piece down first, um, so that I could line up my inside pieces a bit better. Hold that in place while I get my tool. Come on. There we go. And the other side. Make sure that's lined up. I almost feel like I need another hand. <laughs> In. So there. And our last piece is cut at two and a quarter inches by four and three quarters of an inch. Um, and we're scoring at the two and a half inch side at half an inch. So um, again, score tape on that side, fold down. And we're going to cut these corners off. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that um, they don't overlap as much on these corners here. So that it can lie a bit flatter. And we're going to do the same thing on this piece. So mark down half an inch, half an inch. And so this piece will probably, oopsies, go over like that um, so that it can hold everything shut. 
um, depending on what I decide to put in this frame. So, All right. So yeah, I'll probably add a magnet here and a magnet here to hold that down. And behind here, I might put um, a piece of vellum. Maybe it will go this way, like so. And like, of course, I'd trim off those two sides, but that would look nice, I think. Okay. So we have a pocket, kind of like um, a pocket in the front. Then we have our pocket here, pocket here, pocket here. Um, our photo mat assembly here with the four pages. Um, this accordion fold and a pocket back here. We have this slider. We have this pop-up hinge with a pocket. And we have this accordion fold that will not fit into my camera view. <laughs> and that is it. So I will put um, pattern papers on this and my photos in there and I will be right back. So I have finished putting in the pattern papers and the photos in my album and I just wanted to point out that this um, page three and a half here um, that we had um, put the pop-up element in, um, by the time you finish putting all your pattern papers and photos into this accordion, accordion assembly here, this page um, is really thick. So the measurements that I gave you in the beginning, um, the this this page assembly was kind of sticking out like that, like it wasn't lying flat. Um, so I actually took mine out and recut mine. So if you can remember, there was one page that was attached to this page here, and then there was another page that was attached to this page. Um, and so this page here, um, you just want to cut at six inches by five and a half inches and score at half an inch and three quarters of an inch on the six inch side. And that will give you this gusset here, which will allow this piece to lie flat um, instead of sticking out. Um, so again, you want to cut this page a bit bigger and attach that to the base of the album. And the other piece, the one that we attached the pocket to, um, you can cut at the same size as I had previously mentioned. Another thing I wanted to let you know about this page is that um, make sure you mat your pattern paper before you um, put your pop-up element down because otherwise it will be very hard to mat the inside of this page assembly. Um, so just make sure that you do that. So what I actually did, um, because I had taped it down with score tape, which is um, pretty permanent and hard to take off, I like to use undo to remove my pages if that happens. So this only works for dry adhesive, so um, score tape or any other so kind of double-sided tape, um, tape runners would also, this would work on removing those. Um, it doesn't work on wet adhesive. So if you had glue, um, whether that's like a liquid glue or like a glue gun, this would not work to um, detach the pages if you were to use that. So what you do is um, this, you just um, unscrew the top here and you just pour it, kind of um, try to do it as neatly as you can. Um, where the adhesive was and you just let it soak in for about 30 seconds and then you just carefully start to peel it apart 
and it works really well. As you can see there, it didn't leave any residue at all on my album, so that's great. And you just have to make sure to let it dry before you try to um, before you try to adhere anything else because if it's still wet and you try to adhere it, it won't stick. So let's just go through the flip through of this album. So in the front here, I used the vellum piece that we got in the um, Coco Daisy Acorn Lane collection. And I used a circle die to die cut a circle image here for my front. I haven't put anything in this uh, pocket yet. Um, here I have some chipboard pieces. I used um, chipboard pieces um, from both the Acorn Lane collection as well as the Coco Daisy Flannel and Frost collection, which was last month's collection. So if you remember, this is the pocket that flips out. I also used a rub-on from the Acorn Lane collection. And I made a couple of photo mats. Um, these ones were made with this We Are Memory Keepers um, corner chomper, and I used the angle side on the chomper. And one last photo mat in there. Here I used more of the chipboard pieces, um, as well as some of the brown glitter swirls from the flannel and frost collection. Here I included a magnet closure. And sorry about the glare on these photos. Um, just a note, um, I created this, um, the way I create these two 3x4 photos on the same um, photo sheet is um, I use my PicFrame app on my phone. And that's how I created these smaller photos as well. And then I printed them all out using uh, my Canon selfie printer. These larger photos I printed out with um, just my, uh, what printer do I use? I have an HP, HP printer. Here I didn't want to create too much bulk on these pages, so I used the um, um, papers inside the uh, Traveler's look Notebook that you get from the um, Coco Daisy Traveler's Notebook memory keeping kits. I usually take my um, Traveler's Notebook uh, Notebooks apart and I cut the pattern paper up to use. It's just a bit thinner than the regular pattern papers that they have in their kits, so I like to use them in these cases where I don't want as much bulk. So there's two photos here and two photos there. Um, some more rub-ons from the Acorn Lane collection. This is just some twine that I had in my stash. Oops. And 
remember that this actually accordion folds out. And the back looks like that. So there's my completed album. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Make sure to subscribe as well and let me know if you'd like to see any more tutorials like this. Thanks for watching.